Hello and welcome to my banqueting build log for Stronghold Kingdoms. In this video I'll be covering days 36 to 42 and as usual documenting my progress therein. Now as of a little bit earlier this week I became a Marquis 9th rank. So you know that's a entire rank beyond what I was last week. So I'm still making pretty steady progress and I'm happy with that. And in addition if we take a look at my current research I well... I now have 13 additional research points that I haven't been able to spend, so I have pretty much been outranking my current research rate. And this was a concern that I touched on uh, earlier during this build, was that I made a mistake by maxing out mathematics. And I will confess that I was entirely wrong about this, because I hadn't done the build before, so I wasn't exactly sure what to expect, but... My expectations, I would safely say, have been exceeded, or my, my progress has exceeded my wildest expectations in that area. Which leads me to touch on another issue, and I've had at least a couple of players bring this up, and that is, well, why don't you do a real banqueting build log? You know, obviously, the banqueting build log I'm doing here is only catering towards players who can't spend much, right? I mean, that's the whole, whole reason why I only go with the four banqueting good types is because I don't want to spend the money on the additional cards. Well, that's not exactly true. This is the most efficient banqueting build type, and I will go on to illustrate why. So if you're going to be doing all eight good types and using cards, you're going to be buying 16 cards per day. And these are not cheap cards. After the first six good types, the price for these cards jumps exponentially. Well, the second limitation you're going to run into is the parish. Now, if you have that many village types that you're producing all these extra banqueting goods, you're going to need the guilds for each one of those. If you want to be effective, if you want your build to be efficient, you're going to need to upgrade these guilds. That means instead of having to build and upgrade four, of the banqueting bill uh, the banqueting guilds you're going to have to double that number and it's now eight and you have to upgrade all of them that will cost flags and that will cost a lot of resources okay now the next limiting factor let's say you're a prince and as a prince you have 10 villages it's just a number a nice round number now to make my build log work you need one village type and that is highland because highland can build the four or Highland, I should say, can produce the four types of goods that we need to hold the impressive banquets, right? That's the four good type banquet for the times 16 on them honor multiplier. Uh, I only need one village type. That means each one of my villages produces the exact number of banqueting goods that I can use. Now, if you go for all eight, you're going to have to drop down to five. Uh, five villages will in essence, produce what my one village produces. And what I mean by that is the different types of goods, because you're going to need uh, a highland for the four good types that I'm producing. Then you're going to need a valley side for the wine. You're going to need a salt flats for the salt, river one for spice, and river two for the silk. That's the bare minimum. So that limits you, right? Because I'm making that in each one of my villages you're only making that in two of your villages so i've got my 10 villages against your two villages and in addition to that you're going to have to ship all of those goods from one village to another to hold the banquet so you know whereas i can simply log into my one of my villages click the banqueting button and then just go on my merry way you're going to spend time each day running your carts between your villages or i should say your merchants between your villages to get all of those goods into the village that you're going to hold the banquet in. But what we're going to be doing here is pitting a build. On one side, we'll have my build, which has the it uses the four good types. And the other side, we'll have the banqueting build that uses the eight good types. Now we're going to, for sake of simplicity, exclude guilds from this number all, all totaled. So let's say for my current build, the Highland Villages... I'm able to produce 8,000 of each banqueting good type per village per day. So that's all four of them, ten village, all four good types, 8,000 each village, 10 villages every day. That's a total of 80,000 banqueting goods. We multiply 80,000 by four, that's 1.2 million per day at the first age honor rates. Now, okay, so keep that in your mind. You got 1.2 million honor a day from my 
Highland Banqueting Build Lock. Now, let's take a look at the Banqueting Build that uses eight good types. So, uh, I think this is fairly generous, but uh, we're going to say that in each of your villages, you are producing around 3,000 honor goods per day. Now, this is largely because there is a limitation when it comes to villages, uh, River 1 and River 2. There is really a limitation on the amount of honor goods you can produce in those villages a day, and it generally maxes out at about 3,000 with cards in play. And remember, those cards are very expensive to buy. So we're producing 3,000 goods per day in River 1 and River 2, and those are going to be our limiting villages. Now, keep in mind that that's for each of our five villages we have two clusters remember we have five villages make up each cluster because that's how many villages we need to produce all these eight different good types we need at least five so that's six thousand goods per day right and the honor multiplier at for eight goods is 160 so that that brings us up to six thousand times 160 is nine hundred and sixty thousand honor per day which leaves us at around a difference of 240 honor per day less than the banqueting build log I'm using here that uses only Highland Villages and the first four good types for banquets. And this is the reason why the four types of goods, the banqueting build log, uses them. This is a serious banqueting build log. You don't need to use all eight goods. This is the best way you can go when it comes to banqueting. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough about that. Let's quickly take a look at the research that I completed. Okay, a little bit different this time. We're going to be starting off in the education tab of the research tree. And I put five research points into decoration, maxing it out at level five. I put one point of research into philosophy uh, to unlock the sub branch of justice, which I then proceeded to put four points into, also maxing that out. I also put two points of research into stockpile capacity for a total of level three. In the military tab of the research tree, I put an additional point into leadership. I'm currently now at level six, which gives me access to my seven villages. Finally, in the industry tab of the research tree, I've currently put seven points of research into stone quarrying, and I'm currently researching the eighth. I'm just not making enough stone the way it is. Even with the guild in the village maxed out fully, there are not currently enough buildings in my village to make up for that. So if I had to redo it, I'd say I'd prioritize stone quarrying over the honor buildings that I researched. Because I obviously, as you can see here, I only put a few of them up. And you know, producing more stone is something that you're going to be using 24-7. So I would have held off a bit more on the uh, justice buildings and the higher... Yeah, these decoration buildings, I think. Uh, here's another interesting thing about this wolf castle, and it sort of ties into the, I mean, the research that I'm currently I have queued up, and that is the catapult. Uh, there is a wolf castle in my parish, of course, and uh, it's a modest-sized one, but I'm not producing many weapons because I have dedicated a lot of my village space to banqueting. But in addition to this, I don't have my catapult uh, firing rate researched enough so i'm very weak when it comes to offensive armies uh, i've been focusing mostly on economy obviously and i don't feel comfortable attacking this wolf castle yet on the bright side this wolf attacking me can net me a lot of honor if i successfully defend against it unfortunately that is not the case with my last four villages obviously my first one can usually handle it to a good extent and you know that's around thirty thousand honor every attack so you know a lot of good free honor you're going to be making more honor off of the wolf attacking you if you can uh, successfully defend against it than you would simply by having max passive honor you know if you have a very high passive honor multiplier in your villages you're still going to be making less per day through passive honor than if the wolf attacks you and you successfully defend but you know that's pretty much the standard obviously if you're if you're successful in uh, military areas of the game you generally get more honor than you do just being a farmer but i guess that doesn't apply quite as much when it comes to players especially in later ages when uh, pretty much all other honor multipliers are turned up except for the ones that you get when attacking other players 
or when I should say you defend against other players' attacks, it really makes it pointless to defend. It makes it a very attack-centric game. Okay, jumping over to quests. I, I was rather lazy this week, so I only managed to complete three, and those were all relatively easy quests to complete. Uh, Battle Hardened 3, Gathering Materials 3, and Construction Crazy 6. Uh, if we take a look at the leaderboard, I'm quite happy to announce that I'm currently the number three banqueter in this world uh, in terms of packets produced. And when it comes to my actual rank, that's remember that's rank plus sub rank, I am ranked number 39th. So in other words, I'm the 39th or so uh, highest ranked player in this world of around 10,000 people. So I think it's a decent progression. Obviously, when it comes to actual points, I'm pretty much lagging in that area because my villages do not have uh, fully built castles and a lot of my villages are still in the process of being built whereas players who played cards they can easily hit the top of this leaderboard because they have instant village uh, instant village buildings they build all that up almost instantly as well as instant castles lastly i'd like to cover the cards that i did play and this is pretty important because i only played four you know the four i told you i was cutting back last week and uh, we're going to point out the four here that I did play. Costs me under 80 card points per day for these four card types. So I played 14 deer stalking cards, 14 furniture making cards, 14 metal crafts cards, and 14 tailoring cards in the past week. So I think that is that's pretty much covered everything. Oh, well, maybe I should mention my seventh village in the previous video. I was quite stupidly flailing around here with the mouse talking about how how I was going to capture a bumpkin and people even noticed uh, right there on my screen was a charter in the very same village that I'm interested in acquiring villages in. So that was ultimately quite silly and probably stupid of me to see how easily I overlooked it. Just wanted to point that out. I did buy the charter. It was a $60,000 gold cost, but we fronted it just fine. And that unless we get another charter, it looks like this person is going to have to go next because I I want another village in this parish. And that's going to get me up to eight villages. Hopefully I will have attained the rank of Duke by next week. I think that would be great. I would love to see progress like that. That would, that would really uh, exceed my wildest expectations, I guess you could say. But other than that, there hasn't been a whole lot going on. Uh, the past week I've sort of been on uh, something of a hiatus. I haven't been playing as hard as I was in the past uh, couple of months, I guess. And uh, I've been keeping my production up, obviously. my I've always been playing those cards. But any of the extra stuff, like doing quests and stuff to get additional honor, I was not focusing on those at all. So that pretty much covers everything for this week. And I hope for those of you who doubted the veracity of this banqueting build log, this style of banqueting build... Uh, I hope it put those doubts to rest, right? Obviously, I welcome anybody to step up and challenge this technique, but I am pretty certain that you're not going to be doing much better. And it would be a build that I and most other people who are actually constrained by the amount of money we can spend on the game would ever even consider. So, yeah, thank you very much, as always, for watching. And I do hope to see you next time. Stronghold Kingdoms. The battle has just begun. <laughs>